James McCarthy, good morning and a very, very warm welcome to 10Q interview. Good morning. Lovely to be here. Thanks for asking. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm actually looking forward to our chat and I'll crack straight on because I know time is of the essence. Why filmmaking? How did you get started? I didn't have any choice, really. I had no choice whatsoever. My, um, <laughs> when I wasn't academically brilliant, um, <laughs> uh, that, that helped, um, uh, although I read a lot. Uh, my dad was in the film business. Um, and yeah, he was a sound editor. Well, he was a picture editor, sound editor. Then he was a director. Um, and, uh, he run loads of, he run about three really, really successful sound studios in Soho. Um, and that's what we were brought up with. My dad did not kick a football around with me. Um, okay. uh, he did not take me to sporting events. Um, but we did go to the cinema about three times. Oh, nice. A week of which I was put in front of films that I had no idea what was going on. Oh, I'm eight. What I don't understand. Or <laughs> suitable? My, uh, no, no, most of them weren't. And I, it's <laughs> nice to know that I've I've done that with my own children, um, where um, where I remember my son at school doing some sort of media thing, and they said, "Well, obviously at your age, nobody's seen Apocalypse Now," and his hand went up. <laughs> and then we got a note saying, "Should you be showing Apocalypse Now to your nine-year-old son?" And I went. Well, I haven't shown him. I haven't shown him the director's cut. It was a short, so his love of film that's carried on as well, and and my daughter's as well. So I had absolutely, and utterly, no choice. I didn't know what to do with my life. I went to drama. I wanted to be an actor. I went to drama school. Um, came out of that. Worked consistently. Um, so I was spoilt for about ten years, and then suddenly it did that. And I didn't work quite as much. A and anything we would have seen? No, I, I lots of lots of commercials when I had hair. Oh. Um, awful lot of commercials. Um, what, I then. What was, the, what was the best commercial? The bet the the one that that I keep getting fifty six pounds and three p for, which is absolutely fine, um, is a Just Brazil's advert. Somebody put it up on YouTube saying, um, you know, it was 1977. Sod off. It was not what's that. What do you think I am? Um, uh, and that Just Brazil's was that came out every Christmas for six years. You used to pay for Christmas and beyond. Nice. Um, and that's when you could make money out of commercials. Um, and they had one of those, you know, those Channel 4 things where they ask a load of <laughs> B and C list celebrities about their favourite yeah. Um. And I was I was number eleven going. Really? It was only Christmas until we saw the Just Brazil's man. Um. And and you could find it on YouTube. You don't have to, but you. Can I will find look it on for YouTube. it, and if I find it, I will link to it in the show notes below. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. I had a horrible <laughs> thing. I should have said that. Um. But that was extraordinary. That when you look at it, and I remember absolutely remember the shoot. Lovely director. Lovely day. We we spent two days shooting that. I mean, we shoot that in a morning now. Do you know what I mean two days with full. Monty crew. Yeah. I mean, just, and the, I think those days have, have sort of gone. And in, and in many respects, it, it was, it was sort of their own fault because they were so overcharging. Yeah. And when people suddenly realized how much things cost and, you know, it, it changed the business and people suddenly couldn't be charging for a commercial like that, you know, is that a good thing for the industry? Bad thing? Um, It's probably a bad thing. I mean, the, 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 the biggest problem i always remember it was when camcorders way back yeah okay you know they were on argos or you know on that laminated book of dreams yeah and that's from bill bailey that's remind, um, that and, reminds me of christmas is this flicking yes, through that it's the argo, it's yeah, the argo. Yeah. Oh, i want that want this yeah, yeah. and suddenly they became affordable which was great and people could make stuff and they they got little edit things that they could do yeah. and and it and it that was the sort of down the downside of our business because everybody went well why do you need a great big camera why yeah. do you know that's what we, we used to get all the time well why don't you just shoot it like this and we get it with phones now we've got we've got lots of lots of clients who go why can't you just shoot it on a phone and I go well okay what well, is that what you want it to look like then is that is that the vibe we're going because I can do that with a big camera and make it look like it's been on a phone so I think it's great and I think people. What's happened is that I think the mystique of filmmaking, and quite rightly in many respects, has sort of has sort of got whisked away. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That those those curtains have been parted, and people understand it 
sort of a lot more, which is a good thing because then you have clients who understand the process and are on your side with it. And yep. then they're, yeah, on the comp first side, you've got clients who go, why, why is it costing so much money? And you, you think go, they well, know better. Yeah, because it, I'm not shooting it on a phone, mate. And, you know, we've got drones and this happening and models, and that's why it costs a lot of money. But there you go. So I had absolutely and utterly no choice about getting into the film business. And I worked for my dad um, for two years as studio manager, and um, and then I worked as a dubbing editor. So I'd gone down that whole route. Yeah. Uh, when I was very young, the only thing I regret, and you should always take every opportunity, because I'd got into drama school, there was an art director on uh, a dad uh, on a film that my dad was um, producing and directing, and we got on so well that he offered, and I was so young, um, and I was young, to go out and help him on the new Superman movie with Christopher Reeve. Wow! And he said, "Just come out." He said, "I love working with you. Come out with me." And I said. I still think about it now. I said mm -hmm. no, because I got into drama school. And he kept saying, you can defer going back to drama school. Come and spend six months working on the Superman film in Pinewood and in Hollywood. That's the only regret I have, thinking, oh, I could have done that. Um, and then I ended up doing this because I ended up, I was a script doctor. I then made the sideways turn into directing commercials, mainly overseas, um, yeah. in Europe, a lot of Europe stuff, European stuff. And then um, ended up with a with a with a very this is really quite dull, isn't it? This rather um, we it, it, this guy um, came to us um, or came to me, and he had this extraordinary idea, and he invented years before you could do it properly. He invented memes, basically, oh, and yeah, he was he was extraordinary, and he'd worked within the mobile phone business for years and years and years, right, and years ahead of his time because the technology wasn't there to actually do that but he yeah. went to hallmark channel you know hallmark channel they yep. they do the cards but they also they also make there is that they also make these extraordinary um um films that you know the you know you know a life in the day of and um yeah, yeah, yeah. you know escape from and it always used to have one major star in it um and they 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 rolled these out thousands thousands of them hundreds and hundreds of these films and he thought the idea was was to go these through these films. He went to Hallmark. He would he bought the rights to all the films, or would share the rights with them, yep. and then we would go through those those things and find clips, and take them out and put a, a silly gag on on it. <laughs> and it was literally, or there was a reaction, you know, and I was like, yeah. and I what, what, you know, all those react. And but it never it never quite worked because the technology just simply wasn't there. You know there there was there was it was all still not quite dial up. When was that? Early two thousands. Uh, yes, a little bit earlier than probably oh, a little bit earlier than that. And that's okay. where I met Chris, my business partner, and right. um and he and I used to burn the midnight oil. The the, the best thing was watching five thousand of these in <laughs> going mad watching this rubbish and going oh that's a funny bit. <laughs> um <laughs> we can use that but it, it's a shame because if he hadn't and also you couldn't monetize it yeah properly because people didn't want to and now it's free now you you get them with your phone and that's that so although and I know now, now you put those on tiktok and they get millions and millions of views and millions and millions of views yeah. but there you go and um so chris and i then started up a production company and um and it and, and it was sort of onwards from there so that's how i got to here to odd man out so you message. segued very nicely to odd man out What's, what's the uh, what's the elevator pitch for anyone watching listening? Um, uh, 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 there is oh I, yes, it's that one, isn't it? Yeah, what what's your USP? I mean, you know, <laughs> um, I hate that. We we have we've had a couple of people come round and do that and go through with big whiteboards and going, and we're still none the wiser by the end of it. Going, <laughs> no idea why. Um, I think our experience is is huge. Uh, we know shortcuts that don't cost a fortune. Right. Um, we're incredibly good at thinking on our feet on set. And if something else brilliant comes up, we'll shoot that at the same time. Okay. We love a storyboard, but there's a bit, but we tend to do storyboards mainly for the client. 
Yeah. Um, and then we tend to shoot that storyboard because that's the safety. And then we'll add our own bits and bobs to it and go, this really works. So I think our USP is, is the fact we've just been around a long, long time. And we could, there's just that you can't teach experience. No. And I think having a massive open mind about the people you work with, about the younger people that you work with. I mean, we'll, we'll pinch and use anybody's ideas. Everybody has, has got, has got, uh, has got a valid point. And, yeah. and, and if they can work it out then, and, and the reasons why we should do it, then I'll go with it 100%, even if we're going off track a bit. What, what so sort of I, content are you making? We make, um, we make a lot of brand films um, uh, for, some luxury goods. Um, we used to do a lot for Aston Martin at one point until production co- companies started giving it away because they wanted Aston Martin on their roster. Yeah, <laughs> and they really were. They, we just went. No, I'm terribly sorry. You have to pay for it. And they went, but we're Aston Martin. And they went, well, I'm very sorry. We, that, I, that doesn't pay my mortgage, Mr. Aston that, Martin. That that doesn't pay the rent yeah. and f- fill the fridge. Um, yeah. uh, we do. We do a lot of residential. Um, uh, marketing films uh, and commercial marketing films. We try and do those completely differently. There's, there is a, a sort of template that I think has, has thankfully changed and people are much more open now about doing things a little bit differently because it right. used to be the classic model in a dress. They're continually drinking wine or having a coffee <laughs> or going shopping um, or getting out of Lamborghini and you're going... Oh, is is that not how you to- live? <laughs> yes, every day. Yeah. Um, I certainly my laundry is not out ever uh, <laughs> in the in the uh, the house. So so there was that. So that that has changed, mm. thankfully. So now we rely more on humour and more on wit, um, and more on engagement with people. Um, we do a lot of uh, car work as well. Uh, we work a lot with Haymarket. Um, um, so just anything. We do a lot of B2B stuff. We do a lot of corporate stuff. I hate the word corporate. I can't find another word. There isn't another word. Yeah. A lot of business films. But again, the trick with them is is just to, just to turn it a little bit on its head, just a little bit, so you can just... I think, I think it's one of the questions you were going to ask anyway, but what, what our most frustrating bit is that I wish that marketing and communications people in firms would trust their people more in what they, they will that. watch and what they will understand. Yeah. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? No, do you know, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. I, no, I had this very same experience a few years ago where I started a business with a, a fellow, you know, we were both a fellow 40-year-old, 40-year-old white guys, right? And <laughs> we, we hired we hired a girl, God, such a six biggest thing to say a young lady she was 20 something and the value she brought in opening our eyes to like actually what other people see outside of our little circle and stuff was 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 huge and it was a bit of a aha moment for me I thought, oh. <laughs> yeah I know yeah you go really yeah uh yeah I mean I get uh, um I often when we have a when we have a new job come in I'll, I will talk to my kids around the dinner table. You mentioned them earlier. Are, are they are they in the same industry as you? Oh God, yeah. Well, um, yes. My son um, works with us a lot um, okay. as uh, um, you know, an autocue operator um, through to second camera. He's very good. So uh, and uh, so he does, um, you know, uh, you know a lot of that. He does a lot of the sort of legwork and stuff. He's he's um, he's a really good production associate. So if I need somebody, we've got a very big job on, and I need a lot of research. He does that. He's so that's great. My daughter um, is uh, has um, finished university uh, a couple of years ago, and she's now auditioning for drama school because she okay. wants to be an actress. <laughs> And no matter what you say, you can't say it, can you? you can't go, oh, really, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but you know, she's you've, she's got to follow her dream. She's a great producer, actually. She's a really, really good producer and very good director. Okay. Um, so, and our whole family mix for my wife is all theatre based and backgrounds and everything. Well, she had no choice really. None of <laughs> us have got any choice. No. You know, you sit there going, "Why don't you get a job where you get a pension at the end?" Yeah. yeah. But 
Where's the, where's the fun yeah. in that? Yeah, where's the fun in that? Uh, where is the fun in that? So, yeah, our content is varied. You know, it's, it's a difficult one. We've been told so many times, oh, you should specialise. But, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a difficult one. And, yes, we should specialise, but we don't, you know. And I know there are hundreds and hundreds of production yeah. companies out there who are doing kind of what we're doing. But we hope we bring a little twist to it that's, that most people don't have. Let, let's, let's talk about that then. So yeah. the next question is about brainstorming and ideation. You mentioned a minute ago about how you changed what the residential videos look like. Yeah. Well, we were one of the first to start going, have you ever thought of? So that's that's kind of where how does how do you and your company like approach brainstorming and ideation? Because I, I think it's important. I think a lot of people struggle with that. It's it, it is a struggle, and, and it shouldn't, and actually it shouldn't be. I think I think what we're all guilty of. Mm. Oh, sorry, that's a, I thought I'd turn that off. Um, what we're all guilty of is that uh, you know a job comes in and you get the brief yeah such as it is that's f you know five lines and you're going for but there's what, that, what, awful would that what would that brief look like out of curiosity oh oh it's oh we want to create a film that how that, that highlights our so and so and uh, does that and we and then they've already written it themselves by saying <laughs> and we want to interview 150 people um, you know, within their offices, yeah. and that, and and then put it together for bits for so. You know, the only bit now is the new bit is social media. They yeah. Immediately put social media on there as if that makes it suddenly hit. And we take that up and we go, thanks very much for that one, and and we put it to one side, and then we write our own brief, okay. saying this is what it is. I, I think the pressure on people to come up with ideas is is that classic. I mean, I come from that sort of advertising agency bit where when a new commission came in or we were pitching for something or whatever it is, we all would sit around a table. There would be six or seven of us yeah. knocking around ideas, thinking about ideas, throwing them away. But then often we were left to our own devices and I've come up and so has Chris have come up with better ideas at two o'clock in the morning or, yeah. or, or having your first cup of coffee in the morning at home or taking the dog for a walk where you suddenly yeah. go, Oh, actually, that that's quite a good idea. Or you're watching a film or a TV show, and, and something just one little thing happens, and then that suddenly starts to grow. Yeah. And and the awful thing is, and there are lots lots of people who think the same way, um, is that all the great stories have been told. There is nothing new or original at all. There isn't. Uh, that's my own. That's my personal feeling. I'm sure I get shouted down for that one. But there is no. There's no. There isn't anything original. It's all been done before. And if you look back, which God bless him, my dad taught me. You, you look back, you know, to silent movies, and he yeah. was a great silent movie aficionado. You'd sit there going, Jesus, they were doing that then, but they were doing it in camera. How the hell did they do that? Well, so been. David Pullen, who introduced us, yes, the king of storytelling. I mean, he was he. I had him on the podcast recently, and he was talking about how, you know, a lot of our storytelling techniques go back to ancient Greece and the, yeah. and the philosophers there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a. It, you shouldn't be you, you you shouldn't be. Not saying nick it completely. I've had an argument with somebody the other day, um, with an agency, um, who wanted us to do something using something and i said you can't do that because that's somebody else's copyright oh they yeah. won't see it and then we went i'm really sorry but perhaps you want to find another production company to do it because i'm not not actually physically stealing somebody else's work and putting it in a film for a commercial purpose you can do it for a pitch yeah if it's you know because you're sitting in a room with five people and they wanted you to clip something from someone else's yes from a from a from a, a well-known situation comedy Oh, okay. um and intercut it with and i went i just not you can't do that one the actors the writers it's owned by it, i'm just not doing it. it it's it's the awful thing with clients it's a bit like google yeah is is the fact that they and you've you've had it everybody's had it when they go can't you just get it from google and you go no i can't I, that's just a platform it just points you at yeah. the thing i can't use that picture of ant and deck well, like in a I guess sorry. on social media. No, sorry, I was going to say on social media, lots of people do it, and they're and they're 
young young kids who are putting out a funny viral video, right? Yeah. And they will quite happily just pinch something because there's no, I don't know if there's any recrimination or not, but I guess when you're at a professional level and you put out professional content, yeah, the, risk, can... the risk games change a bit, don't they? Yeah, the bit, you know, you don't want, you don't want to be, I mean, it's like commercial music, you know, that we get it all mm. the time. Oh, I'd like, I'd like this. Oh, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like Senso singing at this point. You know, I'd yeah. like, I, I think we should end with Adele. Um, and you go, I don't think Adele will be very happy about that one. Thanks very much. I can't put commercial music in. Unless you pay a few grand. Unless you pay yeah, quite a lot of yeah. money for Adele to be singing or even a cover. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rabbit hole and you can't go down it because, you know, you, you try and be as professional and you keep your reputation going, but, yeah. but it, but it is hard because it is all out there and because it's all floating around out there, everybody thinks that it's all, it's all free and actually it isn't guys that no. belongs to somebody else. That is just literally a way of pointing at a particular picture or, you know, some yeah. form of video if you're doing it as you say if you're doing it on a tiktok and you're doing it on your thing but if you're monetizing it it that's a that's a it's a gray area where you're you're it's a very fine line you're you're yeah. going if you're oh yeah but i'm not making money out of it and you, well if you're on youtube and you're advert and you're getting money from advertising no, but, so you know so we don't simple as that though and anybody <laughs> any client that might listen to this i'm terribly sorry you can't have adele um, and we can't put Leonardo DiCaprio uh, in any of your films to promote yeah. something. It's not going to happen. No. Sorry, okay. I do rang on a bit, don't I? No. I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I've had it before with agencies. It's, it's funny. Um, let's talk about systems and processes. I, I kind of, from a filmmaking perspective, are there any specific tools or apps you use? Or one thing that comes up a lot is people bringing people in to help maybe specialists or, or that sort of stuff? Oh, continually, all the time. I mean, we, we've, we've got, I mean, my, my, without a doubt, the, the, the only app that I use is a pad and a pencil um, to, to help me do it. I'll talk about AI in a minute because it was quite, we had quite an interesting, anyway, experience. Um, absolutely. We, we, we have a very close-knit team of freelancers. Okay. Um, which is, in many respects, is a sort of, it's, it becomes like a clique in a club, and we're we're a bit rubbish at expanding that, because because it's so much easier to work with people that you know, yeah. that they know you, that you have a relationship with. So there's every everything from graphic designers to DOPs to 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 camera ops, soundies, you know, um, um, just you know, creative responses you know that, yeah. that are freelance we will bring them in and use them I, I i i because not every job you know one size does not fit all and not no. every dop not every camera person is right for every job uh, because they're just simply not it's and it's not just down to the kit they've got it's their mindset and how they want to and 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 understand how we work or the actual process or, or the, the actual content of the film needs something slightly different. Yeah. So we've, we're on our second um, uh, production for an immersion room. So basically you, you walk into the room and the, the ceiling, two walls and the floor. So you're actually, so it's become an immersive experience. Right. And that's been extraordinary. That, that that whole process because it's it, it's a minefield <laughs> like there is no tomorrow we all thought we were yes yeah, sure, that's what you do but actually and we're learning every time we do another one there's more and more and more so we're using a particular dop on that okay that that, that is not only artistically gifted which he is but he's a real techie bod and will build camera arrays and stuff that we can use but you know but then you know but so that that's who we use but we'll we'll grab people off you know the street we have we have we, we do an internship um to local schools here yeah. um and uh we have kids in all the time uh you know in summer holidays particularly or when they can come in at weekends yeah because i want i i need to know from them i haven't got time to look at everything do you know what I mean and, and they yeah. do come up with the most extraordinary ideas some of them bonk this and you go okay Yep. But some of them aren't. Some of them you go, actually, that's bloody brilliant. 
Yeah, I can imagine. How do you, how do you, um, how do you get through that step from knowing someone to a first meeting to then being that person who knows how you work, you know how they work, and actually bridge that gap? Because I agree with you. I think I think it's really important. And there's people I work with who know how I work best, and and vice versa. And actually, that's how we kind of get the best out of each other. Yeah. But but you saying that made me think. Oh, how did we start out, and how did we get from that point to where we are now? I don't. Oh, I don't. I guess time. I mean, you normally. I'm sure you're the same. That within the first fifteen minutes of working with somebody brand new, you know yeah. if it's going to work or not because they just get get <laughs> it. Nerves. And you know, <laughs> and you're, or they don't get it, which is one of those. This is going to be a very long four day shoot. Um, yeah. Um. Uh, and and so, so you know quite quickly, but then there is that's I think that's the reason why we don't possibly expand our vision a bit more than we should do is because within five seconds of somebody turning up on set and all the kits coming out of vans and yeah. being screwed together and there's assistants running all over the place running up lights and stuff like that, you do your fifteen minute catch up with your DOP um, over a cup of coffee and if you're lucky a bacon sauny. Um, <laughs> or similar, um, or a or a Bircher muesli yogurt. Yeah. Obviously. So I, th- I think you know. I think you know within the first ten or fifteen minutes. Do you know what I mean yeah. of of working with somebody new if it's going to work out? Um, and generally, it always does. You don't. I think what you don't get is you don't get quite that magic. I think if you work with somebody you don't get on well with. I mean, yeah. I think I think having a very set. It's it's the classic thing of if you've got a vision. I don't want to sound really twanky, widow twanky about it, but if you've got a vision and they don't share that vision, yeah, then I think you're you're <laughs> it's just a horrible moment, and you have to surround yourself by by with people who go actually yes no that's great or they go oh it's going to be very difficult to do but they'll come up with a solution and I yeah. think that's you know you end up making you making films with your friends in the end and and. Because the process is just simpler, and yeah. we've always treated all our freelancers. We we never do deals with them. We've always paid them what's in the budget. Yeah. Um. We've never ripped anybody off. Um. Because we we I just because we've been ripped off ourselves. And we when we first started the company, Chris and I sat there and went, I am never overcharging the client, and then going back to our freelancers and go, would you take less? Because yeah, yeah. You know, and and so somewhere in the middle, and that's probably why we're not very good businessmen, probably because maybe not good businessmen, but I bet people prefer working with you than than some others. I think so. Well, I think when when budgets are really tight, you can go back to them and go, "Can you do it for this?" And and almost a hundred percent of the time, they go, "Yeah, of course you do," because they know that we're not yeah. we're not ripping them off. Um, so it's 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 a uh, it's it's just. I wish there was a, a, a was a, a kind of easy way to explain it, but there isn't. You know yourself. You you either link with people, then you go great. And 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 I've worked with friends. Yeah. Um. When I've brought in and stuff, and sometimes it hasn't worked, and and yeah, that's yeah. gone. Jesus, that's that's really not what I thought was going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, geez, this is all a freaking disaster. <laughs> and you sit there and go, why are you such a pain in the ass? At what yeah. point did you become a pain in the ass? How you were my, you know, you've. It's a different dynamic, though, having friends involved, isn't it? Because there's different lines that can and can't be crossed, and yeah, it does. It doesn't a, always, always. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, it was a hard. I mean, when 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 my son started first started working for us, and and indeed when my daughter's you know been a runner and stuff on on stuff, or or she's helped with the art direction and stuff, or, or props or makeup or whatever it is, I never told anybody, and and that they were my children. So okay. on the call sheet, it would have their mother's maiden name on it, right. and and because I didn't want anybody to treat them any differently. Not that sounds grand, but I actually wanted feedback from the crew that they were working with about what they were like. Yeah. Um, and thank God it was always positive. And I kept, <laughs> I was uh, my next as opposed to he's a he's a complete git, that lazy bugger. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And I have had, I have, the only one that was horrible, this is a horrible story, and I remember somebody who completely remained nameless, and my daughter, who is rather glam, she obviously takes after her mother, um, 
was running around and he nudged over to me and he went, Phew. and I went, oh, no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. He went, oh, I went, no, no, it doesn't matter why. It just, no, no, don't go away. Go and do something else. <laughs> go away. No. Um, so it's, uh, it's, so I, I think you do. I think, I think oh, you've just got to be flexible on the day. You know, if, yeah. if we've, if we've got a, we've got a, you know, a, a wardrobe person who's, who's, you know, a, a fantastic stylist who then will suddenly come in with something and you go, God, that's, and that, that little moment of a completely different costume that you thought they were going to be wearing suddenly changes everything from the lighting to the way you're going to shoot it to what lens you're going to use yeah. to adding bits in. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, yeah, it, yeah. it has to be, you have to keep moving. Like working as a unit, aren't you? Yeah, and it has. Yeah. That's why they're called film unit. You have to work. I'm not a great. Ah, I never not, do that. <laughs> you know, um, I'm never. I'm not. I'm not a great lover of of the. I'm sure I get shouted down. Uh, I've had arguments about. It. I'm not a great lover of the auteur theory. What's what's that? Where there's literally one person who is in who's who's the whole film and everything else is his vision. Right. So everything you see, um, on the walls, you know, from you know the. The prop he's handling, and everything else, is one person's decision. Has gone. Oh, I want that. Oh, so that comes back to what you were saying earlier about not letting people with the expertise drive the things they're good at. Yeah, and it's mm -hmm. and you sit there and go, I just don't believe in the auteur theory because I I just believe that it's such a collaborative process filmmaking. Yeah. Um, and we don't always get it right. And if a DOP says to us, Do you know what you should do if you use this lens, or we shut that, or actually if I light that, that's going to get. I, and it looks great. We'll, we'll all go for it. I'm, I, with the, the, no room for egos. Yeah. There's every room for good manners. Um, it's and it's the only time I've ever. Right there. It's the only one I've ever. The only time I've ever sacked somebody <laughs> on a set, literally, because they they were treating the crew so badly um, that, uh, and it cost us money. But I was so cross about yeah. the way they were treating the crew, and I just went, "Would you mind leaving?" And um, they said, what do you mean? I said, would you mind leaving? I'm not going to say who it was, not going to say what they did, but I said, would you mind leaving? Just get your stuff and go, because I just won't put up with it. I'd already had three chats quietly going, could you could you start treating just a little bit of please and thank you and yeah. pleasantness? And But if you can't do that, then go home and wallow in a sinkhole of <laughs> self-absorption, <laughs> you know, but just... Fuck off my set, would you mind? <laughs> um, and to stop being nasty to people. There's no, there's no point. There's, there's no point. You've, you've got to have. You've got. Yeah, yeah. Of course, things get stressy and tense. Yeah. But you know, you've got to trust everybody else around you if you've chosen it. Sorry, I'm ramming on about nothing. no. I, it's, it's a, <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's valuable. It's a valuable lesson. But we will move on in the interest of time. Ooh. I So my next question is about goals. Uh, and goals particularly, I guess, for Odd Man, odd man Out. And I'm curious to your answer on this, because obviously you're, you've been running this company for a long time. And do you still have goals? Do you do you work towards something? Or is it a case over time that it's just a, an implied, implicit thing? No I, 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 no, I think we do. I mean, it, it's it's the... I mean, again, it's a, this is a really pragmatic sort of approach and you know but you my and this is only my opinion yet again but generally most production companies um their output um is 90 if you're lucky it's 95 percent of their output are what we call fridge fillers okay, okay. so they they pay the rent they fridge fill. you're not going to see them on their website because when you look at production companies going, they've got 60 people there. There is no way that every film they're going to come out with is award-winning, huge budgets. You know, yeah. everybody does those little ones that we all do, and that gets that pays the rent and everything else. So to be able to produce at least at least one film per year that you look back on in a year's time and go, do you know I, that actually? worked and i'm yeah. quite proud of that and i'm happy to share that with somebody which is the old adage of never ever and we we don't do it i never ever slag off other people's work because you don't know the story about yeah. what happened on that shoot mm. um so so if so that's the goal the goal is to keep going 
Yeah. <laughs> Tour de V, that's the other yeah, one. Yeah. Um, yeah, we had COVID and everything else. Um, the, the, still the world's most exciting thing in the world is to get a new job. That is still, that's still such a buzz. So f- from getting the new job, <laughs> putting the invoice in, that's always quite nice. Yeah. It's the bit in the middle that's a bit of a bugger <laughs> that you've got to get through. You think, oh, we've got to do the middle bit. Can we just put our invoice in? Um, how... how- Sorry to try. How, how yeah. do you get new jobs? Oh, uh, we're uh, um, uh, we uh, mainly it's the best thing in the world is when when a client moves jobs and they yeah. and we go with them. A lot of it is referral. Um, we've got about four or five anchor clients. Um, is that right? I don't know if that's the right phraseology, but have been with us gosh more or less from when we started so we're we're still awesome. working with people that we're we've been working for 15 years and that, they that says can, a lot that does yeah i suppose it, yeah yeah it does i mean we've we've got we've got and it, and it, and it's a difficult one because 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 you 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 have to continually b- not just meet expectations you really have to keep exceeding yeah. them because the paranoia is is that there are there's 15 companies over your shoulder who want a piece of their budget Yep. Who will do it for cheaper, and they'll do it for this, and they'll do it for that, you know. But, but you know, but it's that personal thing that 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 just keeps it going of yeah. of going that. I'm not going to say all these cliches, extra mile, but you know, there's lots of stuff that we do. If there's some reversioning of a film and amends from a film that six months ago, and they want to, well, can we do this? We'll do, that. we'll do that for free. We won't charge them. Do you know what yep. I mean? It's not yep. a great. Uh, it was not pocket but we won't charge it because we'll go no that's because you're investing within that relationship and and they're so shocked about it and also for really huge things where we've done we've done a lot of event films right um where they thankfully that's very kind of you um have have you know sent us all around the world and there are places i would never have been able to afford to go to like japan and right. stuff and, and 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 extraordinary kind of things we've seen um but we've always then and this there our honesty is is that is that we have a budget and if we've if we're under budget we actually do put we actually give them a consolidation of the of of the ins and outs and sometimes we will offer to pay money back wow kills me yeah and go do you know that we didn't i mean for instance particularly on the travel budget yeah if if suddenly we've we've gone we're we're under the travel budget by two grand, we'll certainly go. Actually, we owe you two grand. Ninety nine percent of the world, they go. I'm sure you'll be able to make that disappear, James. And I went well, but I'm just letting you know that we owe you two grand. Um, uh, and that just goes that's a long something, way. Something, James. I tell you, I bet there's not many people or businesses who listen to this and go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's we probably do that. why I haven't got any money. <laughs> Sorry, well, no but it's, maybe, but it's also probably why you've had some clients with you consistently for what you say, 15, 16 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we've never, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't rip, you know, they know we don't rip them off. So actually, a lot of the time now is that we get commissioned to do quite a large film without a budget you know they won't even ask well how much is just this going to cost just the trust factor that you're just not the gonna, trust factor yeah. that we're not that, that that that's what that cost and they'll go yeah fine which is that makes life a lot easier than 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 trying to trying to trying to fiddle out what but you yeah, know it's to still be here but to make one film a year that we're that we're actually really proud of okay as a sort of legacy bit and go, do you know, that still works. That would, that's, that's our aim because nice, not, you know, because not every film you make is going to, you're not going to get up there and get a shiny award no. of which there seem to be many. We've got, we've got half a dozen from, yeah. from, from organizations I've never heard of. Well, if you pay for some, you get even more these days. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Quite. Won't, we, won't, we won't pick at that. So, sorry. No, no. Hand-on. Okay. Um, so next question is about audience engagement and I'm kind of curious if you work with feedback or who your audience is I guess is it you know your clients or your clients customers is feedback uh, on your radar Yo oh god yes yeah every every even for the long standing um depending on how busy we are but generally we try and do it at the very least once a year we will 
either do it these days by Zoom or by email. But we do, we we do, we ask a bunch of questions about what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, what could we do better at. Okay. Um, um, and but then have you always got, done that? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. We've always just gone back and said, well, what are we doing? And actually, a lot of clients are shocked. They go, well, why, why? But we'd complain if you did. I said, no, but we need to improve. We need to be continually yeah. improving. And are we are we hitting the right? And um, but in the and often that prompts, which is interesting, the client saying to us, "Is there anything we can do better to make your life a bit easier?" <laughs> and I go, "Well, a three line brief is not great." Um, is and th- and that this seems to have gone. I keep going off on tangents. But the old-fashioned thing of, of being able to, particularly if you're if you're working with an agency, so you've got a client, they've employed an agency, a brand agency, or a, or a you know a, you know whatever ad, you know, advertising agents, whatever it is, and then the agency have come to us, or the client has come to us and said you're working with this agency. Um, there is never a moment, and this seems to be less and less now. None of us seem to get around a table. Do you know what I mean? There's no representatives from us, from the client, from the agency, from the CGI company or whatever it is to actually sit around and go, what are we all trying to achieve here? What boxes are we needing to tick? And, and are we all are on the same page of it? There's this sort of silo mentality, which I loathe. It drives me up the wall. And it, and it often has a massive impact on budget. Uh, timings mainly because suddenly, you know, we're all going trundling down there <laughs> in the age, you know, so, it's it's an I mean we 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 do work with a lot of agencies we work with a lot of direct clients but it's still the same thing nobody ever wants to sit around and go can we have, just have is that a post pandemic thing it, it start yeah a little bit it 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 sort of started before the pandemic but that okay. definitely strengthened that sort of resolve of let's just do it all on Zoom and yeah. and I've now or team whatever it is and and I've now stopped doing it going I'm not having a creative sit down with a bunch with eight pay people on screen <laughs> where I don't know who's talking because there's a white line that's going it's all just, over it's the place. It's just the dynamic doesn't work, does it? It just doesn't, you know, yeah. and, and then somebody's video goes off, their camera goes off. You go, you're right, you're right, I can see you just looking at your phone. I can see you writing yeah. emails. You're not listening to what we're saying. Um, and I now record them all. Um, right. <laughs> which some people get really upset. What do you mean you're recording it? I said, well, do you know, just, just for reference. Yeah. Um, as I'm actually dressed like somebody in a call centre, I do <laughs> my headset. Look, everybody else has got so much trendy stuff and I've got this old crappy bit from an online sales. It works, um, it works. It works, sort of. Um, so so, so that that's a shame and I think that's, that's something that has to, and we push and push and push to do it because... Mm. You know yourself, you don't, if there are six of you around a table talking about a project, those side conversations that happen yeah. with Bert, do you remember when we did, and you did that, and oh yeah, well actually that could work, those just don't happen. And or they're the gold, looks, aren't they? Yeah, or looks mm-hmm. between people, where you go, where you've had and already had a separate conversation, somebody brings up something and you see them across the other side of the table and you do that, that then springboards everything into place. So it's great technology and it saves me schlepping all over the country to go and see clients because it's great doing it on Zoom. But anything creative, forget it. We don't do it anymore and, and I think put our foot the, down. The issue with Zoom is that only one person can talk at a time. Yeah. And I know one, you know, people might listen to that and go, well, you know, it's obviously rude to not to talk over. But when you're in a room of six, seven people, someone across the room might say something and actually... In its in its own way, it's it's not a great idea. But then something you might be thinking and go, well, if I add this to it, then actually it works. Yeah. But if someone over there on Zoom starts talking, they talk for five minutes. So those magic moments kind of get lost, don't they? And yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. It's it's still that human interaction that that that, that you need. And mm. and yeah, I know people are busy, and um, you know they've always got meetings to go to, and time is the killer. It always is, even when you're on shoots. Everything is time is the nightmare. Um, um, that's the bit that sits in a corner with a with a big hood on and a scythe going. <laughs> yeah. I've got I've got one of those right now, James. As I'm trying to <laughs> count down, and get all the questions done. Oh, sorry, Di. <laughs> and you can imagine now the person talking too much on Zoom. That would have been me. So <laughs> sorry. Okay, 
tell me something you struggle with or find tough. Uh, uh, not talking too much. Um, <laughs> talking too much. I'm all right. I'll try to do one one letter, one word to answers now. Um, budgets have become constricted and restricted, uh, which is which is which is tougher. But actually, I think we quite enjoy the challenge. So that what, we're what's, still. What's driving that? Oh, I just. I, it could be the pandemic. I mean, you know, budgets have always got tighter and tighter. I think people, we get a lot. What what we often get is that if if a client hasn't spent their budget, their annual budget for yeah. filming, we often, which is the worst thing in the world, they will often give us money in lieu in year in lieu okay. for work that's going to happen next year, and it sits in a special account. <laughs> that I sit there and go, I've got my eye in a suit. Can I not? (laughs) Can I, can I not, can we not use that at all? Just for lunch. Um, So I've no idea. I I think just things have got tighter and, and, and there is always somebody out there doing it cheaper than you. Yeah. And, you know, we've had it before with clients where they've gone, Oh, we had it done. Oh, it's not great that they were your half, half the price. And you're going, but I don't, get the not great how, bit how do you how do you deal with that race because it, it doesn't just happen in film it happens in a lot of uh, yeah. creative industries especially as people trying to make a name for themselves or get a bit of you know yeah. a bit of a start a business off how, how do you fight against that race to the bottom oh, I do, by not giving into it really yeah. is is uh, you know we've toyed with the do do we do an odd man out light you know yeah. Which is oh, it's cheaper, and we're only using camera ops. And we're not using, and actually, that is just that it is. That's that's and that's that's the highway to hell. That is that one. So yeah. we just don't. We go okay, fine. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. And sometimes it hurts because we've all got a little bit of an ego. Um, and but but what often happens is is that if it's a rubbishy film, not that you know, or it's not quite up to the stuff that we've been doing, they then come back to you. They 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 will end up coming back to us ninety ninety nine point nine nine. They go, oh, actually, it was a bit of a disaster, and yeah. actually, and and so it's a very, you know, there are big production companies who you know who 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 cock it up mm. by suddenly treating them, treating the clients like rubbish, you know, and 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 stuff. And it, it's a really weird. And we just don't do it. We just can't do it. It's not in our DNA. We can't. Yeah. We, the, the whole respect thing but you just have to put up with it and there's always somebody younger prettier cheaper behind you looking over your shoulder wanting to do that work yeah and that is always we were younger prettier and cheaper when we first started looking over other people's shoulders yeah. so you know don't be in the creative industry move on you know because you're always going to get it you're all somebody's always going to get the job it's it's the classic thing of being an actor where you've done you've done your work on the on the piece you're auditioning for you've done it fantastic you've worked with you've researched the director and the playwright and the, and how they're going to do it and everything else and you go in and you do a fabulous audition and then the actor that turns up doesn't know anything about it is half an hour late doesn't understand it at all is sh- you know is is half pissed because they've had a boozy lunch they're the ones who get the job <laughs> that yeah. that's it that's what what else can you do you know just move on. Fair enough. So I've got no words of wisdom on that one. At all. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. I just haven't. Really. It's just you just have to put up with it, and you're in. And if it hurts you, and you lay I guess, awake, I guess just up. I guess just knowing it is half the battle, right? Because yeah. then you can deal with that. If you don't know about it, then it's, it causes a bigger issue in your head. But if you know it's a, a problem that's never it's always going to be there, then you know you just deal it, with it. Yeah, and move on. it's never going to go away, and that doesn't mean we don't get upset or you, or you get or you get hurt yeah. by it, or it or it preys on on your mind at three o'clock in the morning and you, and you get a bit cross about it, but you know, that's, that's it. And yeah. that's it for everybody. It's not just creative industries. The person who wants to, you know, who's, who didn't get, you know, the, the promotion that somebody else got who didn't really deserve it and yada, yada. So, you know, it's, it, life is life. full of disappointments. <laughs> yeah. You know? So. Okay. Tough it out. <laughs> tough it out. <laughs> Solid advice, James. Just if you could sh- if, if you could shadow one filmmaker, dead or alive, for the day, who would it be and why? 
God, this is the one I've been thinking about a lot. And I, I kept it? thinking, oh, God. Oh, because there, there are thousands, hundreds okay. and hundreds and hundreds. Um, I'd like three. to... Um, I'd I'd like to be on set with Eastwood, only because of the stories I've heard, and I know people who've worked with him. Okay. Um, who it is it, just you know whose whose great line is you know that's enough of this shit. Let's move on. <laughs> and he's done four takes and he's gone and he's walked off. Now there's a man who knows exactly what he wants. Yeah. At the same time, but I'd love to be in. And I'd love to be in an edit suite with Martin Scorsese at three o'clock yeah. in the morning, which apparently is my worst time, but I would be with him. Yeah. Um, just just seeing him how he puts the film together I'd love to go all the way back to to watch Chaplin and Keaton and Stan Laurel and um, Eisenstein and how they put this stuff together down to Billy Wilder William Wyler you know, all those guys that made these extraordinary films and you think God and I know it was a different time and everything else but you know it was a bit there, there was a used to be a commercial director who used to work with a lot and he said the people I most admire at the time he said are not sort of Al Parker and and and, and all the greats of commercial which seems they seem to wander on set and, it, and it's just so easy for them yeah. but it's those worker day directors that that got the job done under budget and still made a good picture yeah is the, the people that I admire the most as well, because there are certain people that they just, it just, they just do it naturally without even a thought in the world. You know, they don't get worried about it. So with, with there your, are hundreds. With your connections, you must have some sort of few degrees of separation from Scorsese. <laughs> uh, I was once sat next to him, actually. Did you? And I was, I was such a gushing fan. He was absolutely, and I'm six foot three and he isn't. Um, right. Uh, we, uh, my wife and I went to the uh, premiere of, it's a long story, it's not a long story, a premiere of, was it Tomorrow Never Die? Was, no, what was, uh, Goldeneye? Was it Goldeneye? Was that the first Pierce Brosnan yes. yeah. Bond? And yep. um, my wife used to work uh, for an agent called Rebecca Blond, and Rebecca Blond used to look after Mr. Desmond Llewellyn, who was Q yep. in... And she'd been to the one in New York and Los Angeles and said, I don't want to go to the London one. Do you guys want to go? And we went, yeah, not off. And, <laughs> if you um, insist. <laughs> if you insist. And I just, uh, it's absolute ball. And we literally walked in and Martin Scorsese was sitting at a table eating on his own. And people were going, and all people nudging because it's Martin Scorsese. Yeah. And I went, come on, love. <laughs> we, you know, Excuse me, could you mind budging up? And and I literally sat there for a good five minutes to enjoy the film, yada 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 yada. And I went, I'm really sorry, but what is the point in me even going on about a Bond film? <laughs> I said, so. And he, we talked for about an hour and a half, and Did you? he was he was, and his knowledge of film, Jesus, I was racking my brains at some point. And thank God, in my dad's education, the silent films, he went. You've heard of Irish, and, and he was he he just we started talking about Keaton and about Chaplin and about how he basically invented screen acting in many respects. Yeah, he was much more naturalistic. He was fantastic, and then then we we got sort of dragged away. And James, that, you should was definitely definitely like write an email to him. <laughs> oh, saying, do you remember? No, no, just saying. No, you probably won't remember, but this happened. Blah blah blah, and. I would give my hind teeth to come and sit in your editing session one day. Yeah, maybe I should. What's, Actually, what's, maybe the, that's what's the worst that's going to happen? What's the worst going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It is He'll true. totally yeah. ignore it and you'll never hear from him again. Or he might go, yeah, go on you know then. what, James? Yeah, why not? Well, yeah. He was uh, he was extraordinary. He, he couldn't talk about anything else but movies, though. That was yeah. it. That was his... Couldn't talk about food. We talked about you know, nothing. Couldn't... And I was fine talking about films for hours, but... But I guess you don't make the movies he's made without that passion and that oh, extraordinary die-hard kind of yeah, you know, and and he's you know you 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 see him on interviews and you know again he talks about the collaboration of it and and how they work and how it doesn't work and um and how he's continually still learning yeah you know from 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 his DOPs and his you know and. But it's that it's it's they are they are quite extraordinary. Those guys who still got that passion for it, the ones that I love, I love those. Spielberg, I think, still has it. 
I think Spielberg yeah. still loves it. I think Cruise, Cruise just loves it, doesn't he? He just mm. loves movies. You know. I know it's not really trendy to like Tom Cruise, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan. No, I know, but I, I don't. No, it isn't. But, you know, and he runs, and he's very funny about the running, because we yeah. used to, he used to be Tom Cruise running. Um, and he's now become a thing. <laughs> if he's always running in a film. Here's, already, yeah. there's the runs coming up. The runs definitely coming. He's running. He's like nearly 60 or something, I think. Tom yeah, I know he is, is yeah. yeah. And all those stunts he does. Still he jumping does. off helicopters and buildings and all oh. sorts. Oh, I immediately turned around and went, oh, that's all green screen. I wish people wouldn't really believe all this thing until I saw the behind the scenes. and went, yeah. oh, shit, he really well, is. he broke his off. ankle, didn't he? Jumping yeah. off. I think it was and off, carried um, on. Charing Cross, Charing Cross Station or somewhere, yeah. Yeah, he jumped over, but he still carried on. He carried on to, give, to complete the shot and left camera. He's a professional. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Tom? <laughs> I mean, I, I am going to move on purely because yeah, of time and purely because I could talk about Tom Cruise movies uh, and Scorsese movies for the next oh five God. hours. Yeah, um, right. If someone came up to you and told you they wanted to be a filmmaker, what would you say to them? Oh, God. No. Um, <laughs> oh, why? Um, uh, um, yeah, I, I do two careers fairs um, for um, both the schools that my children went to. <laughs> <laughs> they left years ago, and I went. Well, I, yeah, um, and I say the same thing. I always say to them, you know, and they, these kids are young because they're yeah. seventeen and eighteen, about to take their A levels, and they go, and I go, you know, I'm really interested in getting into the movie business or television, um, and I go, what do you want to do? And they go, I really want to be a director. And I go, fantastic. What have you made? Yeah. And they go, well, I haven't made anything yet. And I went, why haven't you? Why haven't you made anything? You've got a phone. There's free edit software everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's like, you can buy stuff all over the place really cheaply on Amazon. Why haven't you made a film? It can might be crap, but why haven't you made a film? I was yeah. making stuff on Super 8, mate, you know, yeah. where you had to wait for it to come back and cut it together. Um, the, 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 the easiest ones, if anybody wants to go into the technical side of it, they go, I'm really interested because I love photography. I want to become a cameraman. You go and work at a kit hire company. That's your first port call. You okay. go to a kit hire company, you go and work there because you'll get to know camera people, you get to play with all the cameras, your knowledge will, will expand like there's no tomorrow, you'll know all about the kit, and that's how you get, and then suddenly you get a job when the DOPs go, do you want to come and assist me on a shoot? And that's how you make that segue. If you want to get into the production side of it, the the, the you know, we get 10 or 15 emails to whom it may concern, dear sir, madam, don't yep. do that. Go on somebody's website and look at a film. Even if you don't like it, just make, at least say something or yeah. call up the production company and go, who do I write to? And if they're horrible, then you don't want to go and work for them. And if they're pleasant, like us, <laughs> you, um, and, um, you know, you do want to go and work for them. The, the best guy, and it's only, this is just the best story about, about be, just being brilliant. There was a young guy called George Davis, and we were filming in here on the day he turned up. And we were desperately, the makeup artist was trying to make a child cry. I know that sounds horrible. <laughs> and I was going to poke him in the eye. That'll be fine. <laughs> That'll make him cry. Smear, smearing onions in yeah, his smear face. Smearing an onion on it. And they were putting glycerin. But, you know, it was. And we had the whole thing of this tear had to go right down a particular thing. So we were trying to work it out. It was fine. We're doing it. And suddenly, one of the guys here came up and said, there's a guy who wants to see you. He's got his CV with him. I said, he's got his what? What's, what's, what? Yes, well, uh, yeah, lovely. I'll, we'll put it on the... And I said, well, hold on a minute, mate. I said, what do you mean you got your seat? What are you doing? And he literally, what he did, and that that's why he's so successful now, is that he gridded, he got Google Maps, and he gridded the whole of London. Yeah. And he literally gridded out and worked out where all the production companies were, all their addresses in each little grid. And each day or every other day, he would go and work that grid and drop his CV off at each one of those production companies. And I hired him on the spot and I went, we've got to shoot in two days' time, you're on it. And he just went, what? Yeah, but don't you? I said, no. Anybody who does that yeah. is is extraordinary. You know? what, what's, what's he doing now? Um, well, he moved, I think he's, he's moved out. We lost contact with him, actually. I think he moved out, he moved out of London. But we had him on for about seven or eight films. Okay. And and we had him in the office doing pre and in post, and he was amazing and just a joy and a, a, a thing to work with, and but that's what you do. The other just just goes to show, doesn't it? Just putting in that little extra bit of effort that most people won't do. 
you know, don't do to whom it may concern. Well, yeah. you know, because most people go, delete. Oh, I'm sorry, mate, <laughs> you can't make the offer, the effort. And the other one is, and if you want to build up a portfolio, learn how to shoot on your phone or on a, or on a cheap DSLR camera that does video. You can pick them up secondhand. Learn how to edit. You yeah. know, just Adobe family, get, get, uh, um, get, uh, understand After Effects um, and get those three and get really competent at them. There's no, there's no reason why you shouldn't. Um, and go to big firms, go to loads of corporate firms and go, this is what I do. Do you have any in-house positions for me to do internal communications and film them? And we've had it with a couple of other people who have, in fact, we lost work through it actually. <laughs> basically got it and they I let call it out. advice out <laughs> yeah yeah and they cut us out I just went ass oh, hold on um and the, because then you'll learn you'll learn on the job and you're getting paid don't yeah. don't it's it's a business it's a job you've got to get paid don't give it away for nothing yeah and, and it's and it's a hard one but do that watch every film known to man turn the sound off and watch how it's put together you know, watch, why have they cut there? Why have they cut? Why did they cut there to that reaction? Why is that? Why have they gone for a wide shot? You know, just question everything when you're looking at it, but watch it without the sound, you know? So you're sitting there going, does it still make sense, yeah. this film? And uh, and don't just watch Marvel films. Just uh, <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with them, because they're great, no. but, you know, don't. Out of curiosity, what, what's your sort of view of YouTube and filmmakers on YouTube? I think it's, I think it's, you know, fill your boots, boys and girls, you know, go for it. Go, you know, do, you know, don't, you know, nick other people's stuff. Um, but, you know, just go for it. And if you can monetize it and you get up every morning, there is nothing better than your first paycheck as a filmmaker. You go, my God, somebody's actually paid me money to yeah. do something I really, really like and love. And YouTubers, you know, the, you know, the same. I think I I don't know what they do when 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 their lifespan on YouTube runs out because I know that they're getting money from adverts, but if they suddenly want to become an independent filmmaker, yeah, you've you you and the whole monetization of that bit where you're you know you you're going to have to be you're you're going to have to speed up. It's great spending seven days on an edit. Yeah, but in the real world, you can't spend seven days on an edit no. unless you've got the budget for it. Yeah, do you mean? But I, 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 I read any anything. You know, I, I look at TikTok occasionally, not very often. Um, and YouTube, and I try and keep up with what's going on in YouTube and stuff. And some of it is inane beyond belief. Yeah. Um, and then there's others which I sit there and go, and my poor business partner Chris is going, I can't believe you're watching it. I was saying. But these four lads are hysteric. It's like four mates together mucking about. Yeah. And they're filming it, and they've got eight and a half million people watching them, yeah. following them. And you go, it's funny. It's really sweet. You know, they, but it's a good it's learning just, ground, isn't it? Oh. It's, and, you, and you can fail. You can cock up yeah. big time, and nobody really cares, as long as you don't yeah. upset anybody. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, I'm a great believer in you just go for it. Everybody does it and, and just go out and do it and stop making excuses about not doing it. Because the technology is out there and it's within everybody's reach. So yeah. off your pop and start okay. making films. There you go. Do it. Um, if we spoke again in 12 months and you considered it had been a successful year for yourself and odd man out, what would have happened? I would have completed that marathon. Can they do a half marathon? That would be one. Um, are, you, are you looking year, to do a marathon? Uh, yeah, I've only done a half marathon, then I get bored. Um, I once did try and do a marathon and literally just got bored about halfway around. Just went, oh, I was bored running. <laughs> went home. Um, I was going, what are you doing? I went, oh, I just got bored. It's so boring. How many <laughs> podcasts and music can you listen to? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, we'd like to still be here, please. Thanks. Um, yeah. Oh, you, you know that what I said before. Just, just have made at least one film that we are just truly proud of. Yeah, and and that does its job. What was your? What that was your question, wasn't it? Yes. Was Consider question, it yeah, be yeah. a successful year. That you know that we're still paying our we're still paying our people wages. That we're that we that we're still working. That we're still one of the best feelings in the world for me is to enter the Christmas period knowing I've got a couple of projects to go back to in January. 
Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing with us in COVID was not not the having anything to, to go back and going, shit, we haven't got anything on the board. Mm. And you sit there going, Cry. you know, that's a scary bit. So if at the end of the year we've made at least one film that we're, that we're really, really, really proud of, it's not that we're not proud of every film we make, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, you're... But, but the ones that make it onto the showreel. Yeah, the ones that make it on the showreel are not the ones that are just fridge fillers. Yeah. Um, and we're still here and, we've, and, we're st- and we're still loved and wanted for, the, for, for 2024 by, by people who still want us to come in and make their films and yeah. need to talk too much. Um, I do smell nice, apparently, which is what clients like. <laughs> it's true. One of them said, you know, I can smell you before I come into the meeting room. Um, and, and she said, it makes me so happy. And I went, that's a pleasure. <laughs> a link, you should be, a, you could be the face of the links adverts. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's not link, cheeky but links, can you imagine? <laughs> oh my God, what died? Nothing against links, sorry. No. Know. Do you want to sponsor links? Uh, <laughs> but you cool. see, you know, you you got you see what you're doing. I think is amazing. I think I think it's fantastic. I think I think I think just this, these opportunities out there now, I yeah. think are fantastic. And and I know everybody's scared about AI, um, and uh, and I, I, you know, I'm more worried about AI getting in the hands of politicians more than I am for filmmakers. <sighs> That's where they've got a little, podcast. they've got a two-way thing in with AI, and AI is just telling them what to say is something a bit sad. Um, yeah. I have used it. Um, I, I, I literally, as a random thing, we were doing a, a, a pitch not so long ago um, to do a tourist film of a, of a country, right. um, and um, I can't say what because we haven't got it yet. And um, I just put it into Chat GPT, um, you know, produce a script for this, 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 this. Yeah, and you know, three minutes later, it churned out. Um, <laughs> it was fine. The script was fine. It was absolutely yeah. fine. I'd never use it in a million years. It was like that's such a cliche. That's the first thing you write down and do it in fifteen minutes and go. Yeah. Open on a sunrise over the. Do you know what I mean? But it had been written, and that's the scary bit. Is it's like. What if a client goes, yeah, well, no, 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 hold on. You can do better than that. You don't have to do that. But, one. It, but it's a good starting point for you, isn't it? Rather than that blank sheet where you go, right. Okay. Yeah. And you go, yeah. fine. You know, and, and if, and if you're trying to collate enormous amounts of information together into a sort of, even a voiceover script. Yeah. That can get, that's, it's, it's, it's just a, it's, it's just another tool, but yeah, we're, we're all worried about it. I mean, whether it takes over our jobs or not. Oh, or I read the other day, somebody said, don't worry about AI if you're in the creative industries. It just means now that clients have to be really, really specific about what they want. So therefore, we're all safe. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, do you know, there's a truth to that going, yeah, but what do you really want, says AI? Well, well we want, oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Sorry. I made nope. that might have been complete all bollocks, that is. Because having right. watched Dave Pullen speak brilliantly. <laughs> uh, James, I, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll draw a line under it there. And I, and I want to thank you for coming on. I, I, it wasn't. I thought it was great. And I think it's always interesting for me. I always feel I, I took things away from it. And that, for me, is the measure of a good podcast, right? Because if I take things away from it, when people yeah, listen to this. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, I'm a very practical. Yeah, we can talk about the arty farty stuff. But, you know, the practical thing of filmmaking, the pragmatics of trying to make money out of it. Yeah. And trying to have a living out of it is, is a hard one. You know, yeah. it's 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 tough out there. It's and it's always been tough, and um, we've we've all entered it with our eyes open. You know, but, yeah. You know, but that's okay. It's fine. And we still, if you still wake up in the morning, look, you know, looking forward to go to work and looking forward to work on something, you know, that's great. What more do you want? That's that's kind of the dream, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and if you can get can... Your, if I can get my dog into a shot, I often do. <laughs> She's been in more films than anybody <laughs> else. She was that twig again? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I've just got her. She's getting a bit older now. She's, got, it's like a, she's uh, very demanding. Like, a, like an Easter egg, isn't it? From uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. James, I want to thank you for your time this morning. Oh, God, thank you. Thanks very much. I really enjoyed that. Sorry, I know if I spoke too much, I'm sure you can get the scissors in somewhere. No, 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 no. I will not cut <coughs> one Blow single frame from that. What... Um, if people want to come and say hi or want to check out your work or what you're up to, 
where should I point them? What direction should I point them in in the show notes? Oh, you can go onto our website, which is www.omotv.co.uk. Excuse yep. the website, because strangely, we haven't updated it in about four years, and it's a bit rubbish. So, uh, 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 but, you know, just ring up for a chat. Okay. Ring up, uh, call up I for a chat and have a chat, because, I, you know, we're about as honest as you can get, and we'll be honest about what people what budgets and what you will get for your budget yeah. and what, and what you want to create. Okay. And, and, and if we're not the right people for it, and there are loads that we've done that we've said, we're just not the right people for it. Go to them, go to this okay. production company or go to them. They're fantastic. And we do pass work out, which is why our accountant shouts at us, but <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what do you do? Okay. I will link to that below. James, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chris. Have a good day. And um, and I'm missing the beard. I don't know. It's just <laughs> completely through me. <laughs> <laughs>